All right, so we've been talking about double integrals, and if the 2D region that we're integrating over looks like a circle, polar coordinates, or switching the entire integral over to polar coordinates is going to be much easier uh, than integrating with a lot of square roots. And I'll show you an example, but first let me show you how you would convert an integral. So we've been talking about double integrals. It's been over some region, so I don't know, let's call that region R. Now remember our R's has X's and Y's in it. Um, our function would have X's and Y's in it, and then we would integrate, we're, I'm going to call this dA, but dA would be um, either dx dy, it's either dx dy or dy dx. All right, so that's what we've been doing. If we want to switch this over to polar coordinates, we're going to have to switch our whole region over to r's and thetas. And usually when we do this, we have circles, and so we usually end up with numbers. The radius ends up going from 0 to whatever the radius of the circle is, and theta ends up being whatever part of the circle we're talking about. Now the function itself, we're also going to have to convert over. And then the tricky part about all of this is that instead of just being dr, d theta, and switching that over, we need to tack another r in there r dr d theta. And here's the reason. If we're integrating over some, some circle, whoa, that's a pretty bad circle. Okay, so I don't know. There's my circle that I'm trying to integrate over. And if I break this up into a bunch of very, very small components, I would want to take slivers, so maybe like a sliver of the pie there, and then I'd want to break that up even further, so I'd maybe take a little slice of it that direction. And so every single little piece that we add up, instead of being a rectangle actually looks something like this. Now, I can call one side of this, so I could say that this little side of it, that's a little tiny change in the radius. That's a little tiny dr. And if you look at the formula for an arc length, so that inside arc there would actually have a distance of r times d theta. And so if I then look at it at a rectangle, because it's so small, it's just so teeny that it's a rectangle. And so then if I look at the rectangle, then I've got dr times r d theta, which is r dr d theta. So that extra r is being put in there um, because of the arc length of one side of the chunk of a circle in which we're integrating over. All right, so let's do some examples with this. Okay, so let's find the double integral of x times y where the region we're going to integrate over is a circle in the xy plane of radius 9. So we have some circle, its radius is 9 um, in the xy plane. Um, so there's our base is a circle. Then our height is going to be whatever x times y is, so some surface of x times y that is kind of above this circle and essentially we're finding volume of that three-dimensional shape. Now if I were to use the system that we have been using, the top function in all of this would be the square root, so the top function would be the square root of 9 minus x squared. And my bottom function would be the negative square root of 9 minus x squared. So when we integrated, if we integrate with respect to y first, then we put in those square roots, you can just sort of see that with those square roots, things become fairly complicated. 
um, it would be it's harder to integrate with square roots. Now, if we convert to polar coordinates, so I'm going to convert this over to polar coordinates. I'm not going to worry about that xy for just a second. So first of all, I know I need to tack onto the end of this r, dr, and then d theta. Now my radius, because this is a circle, I'm looking at the radius because it's the inner one. Radius goes from 0 to 9. Theta, it's an entire circle, so that's from 0 to 2 pi. And aren't those bounds way nicer than having square roots in there for bounds? They're numbers. Those are pretty easy to deal with. All right, so now we need to convert over this this x times y in there. So I think of this as two pieces, the bounds, we're done with those. And now I need to convert over to x and y. Now x in polar coordinates is r cosine theta, and y in polar coordinates is r sine of theta. So I've got x, r cosine of theta, times y, r sine of theta, times r from the bound, or from the switch over to polar coordinates. All right, so now to evaluate this, I've got a function of r, r cubed, and my bounds are numbers, 0 to 9 for r, and then with theta, I've got cosine of theta times sine of theta, and notice that I've written this as the multiplication of two integrals, and I can do this, if you think back to a couple days ago, um, in class, in the daily homework, we showed that if we had one a function of one variable multiplied by another and numbers in our bounds, that we can actually multiply the two different integrals together. But those two specific things have to happen. We'd have to have two functions multiplied together and numbers in our bounds. All right, so now I can just go ahead and integrate, uh, integrate all of this. So I am going to take the integral of r to the fourth. That's over four. I've got to evaluate that from zero to nine. So that's nine to the fourth over four. That is 6,561 divided by 4. So that was that first integral. Now I've got this second integral to do. Now this is going to be a u substitution. I'd have to choose u as sine. du would be cosine of theta d theta. So really I would just be integrating u du, which would be u squared over 2. So multiplied by this is going to be u squared, now u is sine, so sine squared um, of theta over 2. And I need to evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. So I'd have sine squared of 2 pi over 2 minus sine squared of 0 over 2, which is times 0. Both sine of 2 pi and sine of 0 is 0. So we actually end up getting 0 out of this. What essentially this means, because I know this seems a little strange, is that this function xy has the same amount of surface above the xy plane as it does below the xy plane in over this circle. So maybe, well, let's see on the, where both variables are, so over, let's say the positive and both negative, so over here and here, it's got the same amount of material as it does here and here, and those are canceling each other out when we're finding the volume. All right, let's do another example. All right, so in this example, let's sketch the region. Um, given by the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2 cosine of theta of r dr d theta. Now because we have r dr d theta in here, there really is a function of 1 that we're integrating over. And if we integrate just even a region 
over of and we double in a integrate over one or double integrate one all we get is the area of a two-dimensional object we only get whatever is on the xy plane we're not integrating a z function in this so we're not integrating heights all right and we've got the same thing going on and i know there's an r in there but that r belongs with the dr d theta and so we are essentially integrating just one which means that we get a 2d shape and not a 3d shape in order to get a 3d shape we would have to have a function other than one right there all right, so if we're only integrating a 2D shape, I know that we are just going to be, we're only gonna get something just on the XY plane. So let's look on the inside first. We've got R's. We've got R equals two cosine of theta and R equals zero. R, R equals zero, it's gonna start at the origin. But r equals 2 cosine theta, I don't know how to graph that right now. Um, and here's the trick. So I'm going to multiply both sides by r. Now r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. I'm bringing this back to rectangular coordinates because I really only know how to graph things that are y equals x. Um, and I want to bring it back to something that I know. So then on the right-hand side, I've got two times, now r cosine theta is equal to x in polar coordinates. So now I've got x squared minus 2x, I'm going to leave a blank in there, plus y squared equals 2, um, 0. And I left a blank because I want to complete the square. So I'm going to take this two right here, so I take two, I divide it in half, I square that, one squared is one, so I'm gonna add one to both sides. And what that does is now these three terms will become x minus one squared plus y squared equal to one. Now I can recognize this. I can recognize this as a circle its radius is 1, and its center is 1, 0. So its center is at 1, 0, and its radius is 1. All right, so that was the R part. That was the inner part. And now theta goes from 0 to pi over 2 if you look at the outside integral. Theta works the same way always in, um, in polar coordinates. So theta equals zero is on the x-axis. Theta equals pi over two is on the y-axis. Theta equals pi is over on the negative x. Theta equals three pi over two, etc. And it always works the same way. So if we go from zero to pi over two, what we're tracing then is only that first quadrant, and the part of the circle that's in the first quadrant is the top half of the circle. So once again, that theta equals pi over two, that was not theta in relationship to the circle. You don't switch where theta starts because the circle is now centered somewhere else. Theta still starts at the x-axis, goes towards the y-axis. So in tracing out from 0 to pi over 2, it traces out, traces out the first quadrant, which happens to be the top half of this circle. All right, so there's our sketch. We have the top half of that circle of radius 1.